This is Kathleen from oldworldfarmhouse.com. You know I love all things French country and English and Swedish country styles, which we might call in our modern parlance um, grand millennial or cottage core, so I'm kind of a mix of those things. So, and today I thought I would take you on a tour of my unfitted vintage kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. There are those of us who decide to remodel our kitchens and then there are those of us who have a kitchen remodel thrust upon us. Well, that was us. We had a grease fire in here and so we had to do something uh, right away and we didn't have a budget or a plan or anything. Um, we just had to go. All I knew was I had read in Creating the French Look by Annie Sloan that if you wanted a French look in your kitchen, to get unfitted pieces of furniture because they would never have had fitted cabinetry. So I knew that and my husband knew that he wanted a big farmhouse sink because he remembered one from his childhood and he just absolutely loved it. So armed with those two pieces of knowledge, we <laughs> sallied forth. So I wanted to talk to you today about things that I still love about our unfitted country style kitchen and I, I like to call it an unkitchen, which is something I got from the blogger Laurel Byrne. I will link to her wonderful articles about unfitted kitchens below here. I think she's the one who coins the, coined the term unkitchen. So I thought I would just give you a tour of my unkitchen and talk about things that I still love about my unkitchen and things that I would do differently now that I know a little bit more about my own personal style and just design in general because this house. I've learned so much just from living in this old house and reading up on stuff and things I wish I had known a few years ago when we did our kitchen. So I'm just going to share all that with you. I still absolutely love our built-in kitchen cabinet. Um, originally we looked into doing freestanding cabinetry, but it just didn't seem quite we couldn't quite find what we were looking for so we worked with a local cabinet maker and he helped us get the cabinet of our dreams i, I guess my dreams i had an inspiration picture from an old pierre de book about the provence region of france and there was a picture in there of a cabinet that looked kind of like this and i took it to him and we just worked on it and so i wanted glazed doors and they go all the way up to the ceiling and this is, ceiling is 11 feet tall so they go up quite high and uh, we get all that storage up there then we added some crown molding at the top and it is attached to the top of the wall of the ceiling rather and then we put bun feet on the bottom of the drawer part so that it would look more like a piece of furniture so i like to think that it looks like one of those old sort of like or harkens to one of those old gigantic welsh dressers that you'd see like in an in a english manor house kitchen or something like that i absolutely love this cabinet i love the bun feet i love the color still it's jitterbug jade by sherwin williams i love the wavy antiqued looking glass that i had put in here i don't mind that people can see exactly what's in the cupboards um, we actually store our food in a pantry next door so it wasn't food storage wasn't an issue i don't think i'd necessarily want to be staring at a bunch of food up there but i do not mind the dishes at all i actually like it when we have guests over and they can see exactly where the drinking glasses are if they're looking for one or that kind of thing or the plates that's one thing that, about being a visitor at someone's house i always feel so disoriented in the kitchen and i don't know where a plate or a cup is like if i was going to help them set the table and i don't want to go prying well you can just look at mine and see what's there so i like that some things i wish now that i know more i wish i had done differently i just picked these handles i really loved the handles actually there was something that the cabinet maker just had is you know in his catalog of stuff and I, I loved them and I wanted them fiercely and I still do like them but after looking after years now of looking at house and garden UK and other blog posts I wish that I had gone with those classic the thing that turns and there's a little latch and they're square because I think that would give it even more of a vintage feel and I wish I had done those simple shell pull things like 
half shell pull things here for the same reason. I think that it would make it look even more genuinely like a vintage piece of furniture. I also wish that I had put some kind, asked for some kind of paneling on the sides here. They're just plain. I think if they had a panel, they might look more like a piece of furniture. And then to make it look more like a piece of furniture too, I wouldn't mind adding a corbel here and one on the other side as well, just to make it look even more like the dresser look that I was going for. I also still absolutely love our dual washboard farmhouse sink. It is a showstopper. Everyone who comes in here thinks it must have been original to the house. In fact, we bought it from a place online called Sign of the Crab. They do vintage reproduction plumbing and it came by freight uh, all the way from California and it took five grown men to lift this thing up and hook it onto the wall. I absolutely love it. I love having all of the wetness contained in one area. I love the vintage look it adds to the kitchen. It's just perfect in my opinion. And I also love, now that we're at the sink, I do love my task lighting. I have one big fluorescent bright light above here, which is not my favorite, but when I think would I change anything, I always think no, because if I had pendants, they would get in the, the way of me seeing my beautiful cupboards, and I like that you walk in and you can just see the cupboards without any anything blocking that. So I guess I'm happy with the flat light up on the ceiling, and you do need that bright light when you're working, but I, I don't love it. I do love my task lights. I got this uh, you really do need a light sort of shining right over the sink if you want to get things clean sometimes. And this is just a, you know, it's a reproduction made to look like some kind of old 40s light from Amazon, but it is great. You can dim it. It just plugs into the wall so we didn't have to do any wiring. You could turn it up or down. Um, I still haven't replaced the bowl, but I think we've had this thing three or four years now, and it gives a great light task wise when you're working in the sink. Here's my other task light that I really love. This was, I bought this at Lowe's once. I thought it was gonna go over a doorway we had, but ended up using it in here, and it is a great little task light for the kitchen. We don't have a range hood here. We there was always a cutout here for an exhaust that they must have used at some point. It wasn't being used when we moved in, but we kind of we reinstalled a fan and everything, and it does a good job of venting the stove. And so we didn't have any hood or any way to put a light, and we just put this in there. And I love this little lamp that I have on my kitchen counter. It I do think of it as a task light. Um, I wish that I had undermount lighting here. But I don't actually use this much as a work service so, surface, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. And I do love the way the little lamp looks sitting there. So I knew that I really wanted a big kitchen work table in the kitchen. That, I think that was another recommendation from Annie Sloan, but I also wanted, I so frustrated with countertops not being deep enough when I'm cooking and also having clutter on them. I just wanted a space that was gonna be clear all the time and be like a farmhouse work table. Now, this one, I actually, I adore this table, I really do. There's some things about it that I wish were different, but I will tell you first what I love about it. What I love about it was, it was a third of the cost of what our cabinet maker quote. We we're gonna have the cabinet maker make one of these and it wasn't gonna have any drawers and it was gonna to have to have a laminate top and I think the quote was like $3,500. And we were gonna do it, but then one day we were out at a different store and this was a floor model that they were just getting rid of. And it was just so close to what we really wanted that we went ahead and got it. And it is great, I do, I call it the kitchen work table. Sometimes I slip up and I call it the island and I'm like, no, we do, we do not have an island. There's not an island in this kitchen. This is the farmhouse work table. What's great about it is this is a granite top. I can put hot pans on here. I do not have to worry about them making a mark. They don't, this thing is zero maintenance and I mean zero. I love that. I do not love the pattern. I do not love the color, alas. I wish that I could change this to a soapstone or a Carrara marble, something like that. Oh well. 
I love these big chunky legs. That was something that I was looking for in a table and I just love it. And then I've got storage underneath here. I keep my crock pot down there. I keep my food processor, my KitchenAid. I like having it out in the open. It's really easy to get it in and out. I think it's decorative when it's not being used. I like that I've got a bag of rice down there and a basket of onions and potatoes. I keep my dish towels down there in a big old basket I got in an auction that's huge and keep all the dish towels and dish rags in there and it's almost like another drawer. I just pull it out, push it back. So I love that. My favorite thing though, there are two drawers here. There are two drawers. I just love that. I do not know what I would do if it weren't for these drawers. I think if you're doing an unkitchen, it's totally fine to show your appliances. I'm gonna link to a great blog article by Amy over at Home Glow Design about that, but I totally agree with her that the idea that you had an old kitchen, maybe you had the sink, and then as these newfangled things became available, people added them into their kitchens. They weren't trying to hide them with paneling or whatever. That's definitely a route you can go which is really cool and it's much more expensive. But if you can't do that, I certainly couldn't do that. I think there is no shame in having your vintage pieces or your vintage look pieces or even your antiques and then having your stainless steel fridge, your stainless steel stove, your microwave, your dishwasher. I've got it all right here behind me and I think it looks fine. Now, I bought this fridge, it was the first new fridge I'd ever had in my life and I was somewhat in awe of it, very much in awe of it. And I still am, I, I think the French door fridges with that freezer drawer below are just the best layout for a fridge I have ever experienced, I love it. That being said, I now wish, so that I know better, that I had gotten a counter depth fridge because then we would just, I think it would just feel much better and less bulky through here and I wish I had gotten something with a little bit of styling to it, like the GE Cafe series is really gorgeous, and I think at a, you know, relatively speaking for a, a stylish fridge, a relatively affordable price point, um, but, or like um, North Star or uh, the Big Chill, they have a classic fridge. That would be really cool in here. It looks like the very first refrigerators with all the little doors and latches and stuff. I think that would fit perfectly with the sort of 20s feel that I'm trying to give this room. But anyway, I think it's fine in the meantime to just go ahead and have the fridge there. Great, no problem. Same thing with my stove. This was what we could afford. It's a very good stove, it's a Frigidaire, and I, I actually love how this thing cooks. I just wish that it were vintage. And if I could, while right there that I'm looking at right now. Someday I would like to tear that wall down because it's really just a piece of drywall. There is a recess of an old fireplace back there and I would love to be able to put the range in and then have a mantelpiece built so it looked like you put your, your new cook stove in your old fireplace hearth. I love that look, it's so pretty. Someday, I hope we can do that. In the meantime, the electric range is doing just fine over here. Um, another thing that I did that I really like for this unfitted look, we have had this, this was a total happy accident. We've had this piece uh, ever since we were newlyweds. We bought it off Craigslist from this really sweet couple because we were living in a 20s, era apartment and the kitchen had no counters and i mean none like there were zero zero counters we used to put our dish racks on top of the refrigerator because there was nowhere else to put them this was our one countertop and i loved it then i still love it now when we were moving stuff around in here it ended up working to be the perfect width to fit in between the fridge and the stove and it just gives a little bit of workspace by the stove not a ton, but just enough to like set something down and you know, it works great. On the other side of the stove, I have a little Ikea trolley and I keep all of my like stirrings and stuff and ladles and stuff in there and down below the kids' plastic dishes so they can get to them and I don't have to always be getting them out their cups and plates, they can do it themselves. So I'm really happy with how well that looks. 
I also really am happy still with the colors that we chose to paint the kitchen. When we moved in here, the, the kitchen was bright orange, including the ceiling, and the trim was chocolate brown. Um, <laughs> so we painted it, this color is called Refuge by Sherwin-Williams, and the trim is called, they call it Mellow by Sherwin-Williams, and I still really like the it's a gray blue and then yellow um, there. It's colorful without being too in your face. And I think it lets the brightness of my green cupboard really stand out. And I like that a lot. This kind of functions as our kitchen table. We will pull it away from the wall and I have these little stools that go around it. And in a pinch, we can sit there and eat. It used to be easier when the kids were a little smaller, but they're getting bigger and it's feeling more crowded. Um, it was kind of a last minute thing. We didn't think through the eat in part of the kitchen very well. It's not the easiest kitchen to eat in. I wish, and I think this is something we could do pretty easily is we, I would like to build a very long shelf here, very sturdy and very long along this wall and then get like eight bar stools and tuck them underneath. And then at least in the morning, we could all perch here and have our breakfast like we were at a diner or something. I think that would work much better for our needs because we've got this kitchen and then our dining room is very formal and it's a bit far from the kitchen and so committing to the dining room is kind of like, there's so many times when you just don't wanna make that commitment to go sit and eat in the dining room. And so we end up eating in front of our TV in our den area and I do not like that because ugh, I just rather us be cozy and eating in the kitchen. So if I had to do it again, I wish I had thought through more like where the heck are we going to eat? <laughs> but I think it's a pretty easy fix actually. I, I like the idea of doing that ledge and like the stools or even just to be able to stand. I mean, if you go to a, a bar in Spain, you can often just stand there and get your coffee in the morning. This faux butcher black table, it's great it was super cheap it's very light it's not real it's hollow underneath i really love it it kind of adds to the french look in here and then we also do have an armchair in here we actually used to have two we had one on the other side but it was just a bit too crowded in here i do love having an armchair in the kitchen though i think it gives it again like that unkitchen feel it's just a comfy place to sit I don't care what happens to that upholstery because it's very old and it's actually, it's this velour, it's very, it's pretty easy to clean. Covered the seat cushion with the fabric that I made the curtains in. So I like that. And then I'll show you. This was a total accident, but I'm very fond of it. The chartreuse color on that chair really looks like the light in this picture by Vincent Van Gogh that we hung there. And I just love that. And then the blue that I painted, um, the brown trim coordinates with some of the blue trim in his painting. This was all totally accidental and very happy accident. But that brings me to something else that I really love about my unkitchen is I've been able to hang art and things that I like. This wall is, I just keep adding things that I find that I enjoy and it's t turned into something of a gallery wall over here. And then over by my stove, over by my stove, I have a, a watercolor print that was done by my great aunt. You could find my family across America because all of us have a print, a watercolor print that my great aunt did. I love this one of Chicago. It just makes me feel at home and it's right by my stove. Where I, you know, kitchen's the heart of the home, right? So I love being able to hang some art in here that means something to me. The tile in here, we searched high and low for tile and it was a frustrating experience because I th what we really wanted were some heck hexagonal terracotta tiles that would have looked very French. They're very expensive and we just could not swing the cost. And then we really liked travertine as well, but we were dissuaded from that because again, it was quite expensive. And then they said if you had to seal it every year and it would just be really hard to maintain. We ended up going with this very inexpensive tile from Lowe's. And even then we got 
pushback because we wanted six by six and everyone thought we should get eight by eight or 12 by 12 because it was a kitchen, blah, blah, blah. But we did prevail and get our six by sixes. My husband really loves this tile. I have mixed feelings about it. I There's just something about the color that does not work with the rest of the room, I feel. But it is very sturdy. <laughs> And my only thought is maybe someday I could talk him into letting me paint it. But I don't think that day is going to come anytime soon. So in the meantime, I just try to enjoy it and think of it as a rustic floor that could conceivably have been put down in here if this wasn't an American farmhouse, but a European one. Um, just a note on tile. I did feel when we were looking for tile, and we went many places. We went to an upscale tile place in the big city. We went to a couple mom and pop shops nearby where we live. We went to Home Depot, we went to Lowe's. And I felt like, oh, we also went to Floor and Decor, which if you're gonna do DIY, I think they're a great option, or if you live close enough where they can install. We actually found something there we really liked, and we were going to have them install it, but we were too far outside of their service area. So, but they also really cater to the DIY Tyler. So, and they've got tons of stuff and the price point is very, very low. So that being said, I just wanted to say, I felt like everywhere we went, people wanted to tell us all of the problems with what we wanted, how it wasn't gonna work, and they were trying to sell us something else. And it drove me crazy. I knew nothing about Tile. Now that I know more, I look back at that and I think, I wish people had just worked with us to, to realize our vision instead of telling us why what we wanted was just never gonna work. Then why are you selling it? Okay, rant over. <laughs> but just be confident. Don't let contractors and salespeople try to dissuade you from what your vision is or make you feel like it's impossible or stupid because it's not. It is not. What you want is totally possible in your house. You can have it. It's you and your vision, and there's just a lot of people out there and they don't understand what your vision is, but you just have to stick with it and go with your heart and eventually you will get there. Now, originally when we got this sink, I don't know why we thought from looking at the measurements, we'd be able to fit a dishwasher under here, but of course, once it came, we were quickly disabused of that notion and um, we had to sort of improvise. So as you can see, right here, there is a door. Now, a lot of people encouraged us to get rid of this door because there's another entrance to the kitchen over there, but we really like the idea of there being two ways out of the kitchen. And also it's an original door to the house. It's, it's very beautiful and even the storm door on the other side is even more beautiful and I just, ugh. And someday we're gonna make that covered porch into hopefully more of a place that we can actually want to go out of the kitchen. So we didn't wanna get rid of it. This was the only place, however, to put the dishwasher. Now, it does not bother me that when I pull the dishwasher door down, this door is blocked. Like, I do not care because we hardly ever use this door. It's really just like nice for sort of the emergency situation idea at the moment. It's fine. And my husband likes the dishwasher closed all the time anyway. It drives him crazy to have it open. I tend to leave it open if it's getting loaded with dirty dishes. I don't actually, because it makes him so, it drives him so nuts. So we keep it closed all the time anyway. And it is actually, the workflow does really work really well because you can rinse the dishes and either hand wash them and put them in the drying rack or rinse them and just walk over to the dishwasher. It's not right next to it, but it's close enough that it works really well. And then we just keep our trash can right here. I like my stainless steel trash can that I've had for 12 years and I, you know, it's not hidden or anything, but I, again, it's kind of, to me, part of that unfitted kitchen feel that you would have your trash can just, you know, not in some kind of nifty drawer. <laughs> That's fine with me. And then the same thing with the microwave. We had our cabinet guy build a little housing for the dishwasher, kind of at the last minute when we realized what we were up against. And then we decided to set the microwave right on top of it. And that works just fine. I, I think it's great. I wish sometimes, maybe I'll, someday I'll get like a vintage microwave, vintage look microwave, I don't know. But this one we have is just fine. 
the work triangle. Okay, I feel like I do have a work triangle in here. Here's my sink, here's my fridge, and here's my stove. See, you could draw a line like that. Whoop. There's your triangle. I'd never have any problem working in here. In fact, this is a really easy kitchen to work in. I keep my larger sheet pans and cutting boards in this sweet little basket that my mother-in-law gave me. I think she got the idea from Ina Garten. And it is a great storage solution. I love it. I would love to hear your thoughts about hiding appliances versus keeping them out in the open. Um, I'd love to hear what you think about the unkitchen versus the fitted kitchen and the vintage kitchen versus the not. So much for watching my kitchen tour of my unfitted kitchen trying to look circa 1920s, late 1890s or so. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up down below and follow along with me if you love talking all things old house and French country style, Swedish, English country style, grand millennial and cottage core. This is Kathleen from Old World Farmhouse. Bye-bye.